Chris Castle just sent me an email. Uh, DP just dug through the MLB.com photo store for 2012. Could only find four pitchers not using dark or black colored gloves. Uh, let's see. Matt Cain's on that list. Um, he's the only big name. Jonathan Broxton on that list. But uh, four pitchers have something that is uh, not brown or black glove. Why don't we just outlaw the black glove? That way we would know if you had pine tar on your glove. Mitch Williams never put pine tar on his glove, and he joins us now on loan from the Major League Baseball Network. How are you, Mitch? I'm doing good, Dan. How are you? Did you ever have pine tar on your glove? No, I never did. What did you use? But uh, the fact that they think it make, it changes the integrity of the baseball is an absolute joke. All it is is grip. If anything, it probably helps the hitter instead of something that's going to you know slide away from a pitcher. I would think... You know, Absolutely. Right? I, Finally, someone with common sense. Thank you. I appreciate that, Dan. It's I'm so tired of talking to people that think that grip changes the integrity of what the baseball is going to do. You can do the fact that they have let pitchers go to their mouth on the dirt now is way more. Uh, how do I put this? You can affect the baseball and what it does way more by being able to go to your mouth on the dirt than using pine tar. All right, let, let me start from the beginning here with Davy Johnson and Joe Madden. Uh, do you like, do you appreciate, do you respect Davy Johnson for doing this, calling this uh, no, out? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I mean, I respect Davy Johnson as a manager. What he did the other night, I don't respect at all. Because he had players, I know for a fact, He and he pointed it out that he, he did it in the championship series against the Dodgers and Jay Howell. Yep. When he had a closer sitting in his bullpen that was covered from head to toe in every kind of Vaseline and liquid you could find. Who was that? I'm not going to throw him out there under the bus, but I played with him. I know it. It's just not something that you, if you play with a guy and you know he does something, you don't, once you change teams, you don't bring that up. If he gets caught by the umpire or caught by someone else, that's fine. But you don't throw someone under the bus. That's just not the way it's done. What do you think the Nationals, the players themselves, think of what their manager did? Uh, I'm judging by the reaction yesterday of Peralta going on a field before BP and hugging all the Nationals players. I don't think the Nationals were real wild about it. But I can tell you this for a fact. If I was Peralta, there is zero chance I'm going out there and hugging other guys on the other team that just got me suspended. Well, here's another thing with it. Does Davey have pitchers on the Nationals who have pine tar on their gloves? I wouldn't doubt it at all. Why don't you have – why don't we outlaw black gloves? Uh, number one, the color of the glove, I don't understand. I know you can hide pine tar on it. But as I said, pine tar, the only thing that will change what a baseball does is, number one, if you throw a spitter, which I will admit, when I didn't have a good fastball, I would use a spitter. And all that is is you get your two fingers wet, keep your thumb dry, and have no seams, and throw a fastball. It slips out of your hand. It takes rotation off the baseball, and the bottom falls out of it. Is Why that do hitters use pine tar? To hold onto the bat. Exactly. That's it. It does not change what the baseball does. That's the only, if they're going to outlaw it for pitchers, make hitters go to the plate with a bat fresh out of the box and go to the plate and hit with it. So uh, Norm Charlton, Rob Dibble, John Franco? One of those? Oh, I don't, th I don't think any of those guys used it. Randall K. Myers? Uh, Randy, my, no, Randy wouldn't have used it. Dang. Those guys were all like me. The only one that I would wonder about would be Dib because he had such a good slider that, that you want to get a good grip on a slider. But I never used it. I used very little uh, rosin. And rosin and pine tar, essentially, are the same thing. All you're doing, once you get... Rosin wet, it becomes just like pine tar. Talking to Mitch Williams, Major League Baseball Network, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. 
Uh, I don't know where. I, I hope that Peralta doesn't get suspended. I think the embarrassment, you throw him out of a game, do you think he will get suspended? According to the rule book. Yeah. It is illegal, and you have to follow the rules. I'm not disputing that. I think the rule needs to be changed because if they can take, do all these different studies in our game, take the time to study and film with the slow motion cameras that we have, film a fastball thrown with pine tar, film a breaking ball thrown with pine tar, and then film it without it. There will be no difference in the flight of the baseball. Uh, you know, I had David Johnson managing the uh, Reds in 88. So that would have been uh, Roger McDowell? <laughs> That's a yes. Well, Sherlock Holmes, you're, you're pretty good. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah. Well, he was head to toe in Vaseline. Oh, Raj was, the, Raj was the best. And when he went to L.A., I knew what he did. Do you think I'm going to tell him? Everybody that played with him knew what he did. But do you think that one of us in Philly was going to say anything? No. Okay, what is cheating and what is gamesmanship? What is trying to be a competitor here? I, I'm confused here. Well, Gaylord Perry had it down to a science. I mean, all the stuff he did with his hand going to his hat, going to his ear, going to his hair, he, he had hitters. He messed with their minds. He was a John McEnroe of baseball. Do you think he cheated? Gaylord? Yeah. Well, of course he did. Okay. But you know what? People said Nolan Ryan scuffed the baseball. Well. Mike Scott scuffed the baseball. I, I, they're guys who legitimately cheat uh, for an, adv- you know, an advantage. Well, and I played with guys that super glued sandpaper to their middle finger. And when they rub the ball up, that's what they're doing. I played against guys that I went out to the mound and there'd be four big gashes across the horseshoe of the baseball. <laughs> So, I mean, of course guys cheat. I couldn't command it, so I had to have a ball that had no scuffs on it. But uh, I can give you a quick story about Nolan yep. and Sean Dunstan. Th- this back during the time when Nolan was being accused of, of scuffing the ball and everything, Sean Dunstan was scared to death of Nolan Ryan. The former Cubs well, shortstop. Nolan Ryan okay. would always walk over by the third baseline and kind of kick the dirt and everything and look in the opposing dugout as to say, don't bunt. And Sean was in the on-deck circle when Nolan was doing this, and Keith Moreland yelled out of the dugout, get your ass on the mound, and Sean yelled back, shut up. (laughs) So Sean got in the box, and Nolan threw a pitch, and Gene Michael, the manager, yelled to Sean, check the ball. And Sean oh. turned around and yelled to Gene Michael, shut up, you check the ball, I'm striking out and sitting down. <laughs> but the, the art of cutting a ball, so you could have the catcher do it, third baseman do it, the pitcher could do it. There's eyelets on a glove. You can cut the ball with eyelet. You can cut the ball with a thumbtack. There's all kinds of ways to do it. Is it prevalent? No, it's not. Are there more guys doing it that don't? No, there isn't. But when you get to the heat of the summer, you can do it with sweat. Well, you had All guys. All you have to have is slippery fingers. You had guys who put Vaseline on the inside of their lip. Like there, you have guys who were willing to do. Well, okay, what's the oddest thing you ever saw somebody do trying to gain an advantage, pitcher or hitter? Oh man, well, it would have been. Probably my my buddy in the bullpen. I mean, he had it everywhere. On the bottom of his pants, on his belt loops, everything. Wait, who's that? Roger. Oh, Roger McDowell. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> he had it on his belt loops, too? Oh, I mean, it looked like he's pulling his pants up. Yeah, he's pulling his pants up. <laughs> okay, but now he's a pitching coach, right? Yeah. <laughs> For the Braves. He wouldn't be teaching them anything, would he? No. Of course not. Roger has changed. Honest to good, this is honest to goodness. Roger has changed 180 <laughs> degrees from the guy he was when he was a player. He was honestly the most thoughtful teammate I ever played with. He was downright crazy, though, with the Mets. No, he, he was a nut. Don't get me wrong. But he was like we had a guy on our team, Wally Ritchie, who was a really quiet guy. All he did was crossword puzzles. 
And when Roger went on the road, all Roger did was go shopping. And it wasn't for himself. He'd Wally'd walk in, there'd be a stack of 10 crossword puzzle books sitting on his chair in his locker. Roger thought about his teammates. He went shopping for his teammates. Dale Murphy would not get undressed in front of a woman reporter in the locker room. And Roger went out and bought a life-size cabbage patch woman and set it in Dale's locker so Dale would not get undressed. Do you know that Murph, and you know this, uh, Dale Murphy would take guys out to dinner, but he wouldn't pay for the alcohol. He'd buy your dinner, but he wouldn't, if if you bought alcohol, then that was a separate bill. Is that true? I don't know it to be fact, but it sounds like it'd be accurate. And you had all those knuckleheads there, you know, Cruck and all, you know, Dalton and yeah, Dykstra, Incavilia. We never drank, we never drank anything, though. <laughs> that was against the rules. I saw Dykstra at the China Club in Chicago, had a heater, had a dip, and had it was a gin and tonic or vodka and tonic all at the same yeah. time. So he had a smoke, he had a dip, and he had a drink in his hand. Well, you're talking about a guy that doesn't have enough sense to pound sand in a rat hole. So Lenny wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, as we all found out. We need to. Do, did you lose money with him? I wouldn't give him a nickel to walk across the street for me. But what so about- no, there was no way that I would lose. I took a lot of money from him. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Gambling? Oh, uh, golfing and. Because he loved to have action on everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't exist. He was like Pete Rose in a lot of ways. He had to have something going on at all times. Yeah, Lenny. Lenny was cut from a different mold. Mitch is always. Hopefully, that mold's been thrown out. <laughs> yeah, it, it's jailed. Uh, it's great to talk to you again. Uh, we'll be tuning in tonight, uh, MLB tonight, starting at uh, 6 Eastern. Thank you, buddy. All right, bud. Thank All right. you. That's, uh, then you'll have uh, the Marlins Red Sox at 7 Eastern. Also, 10th anniversary on Friday, Cardinals pitcher Daryl Kyle's death. Major League Baseball Network will uh, have a documentary uh, on Daryl Kyle. Uh, that'll be coming up uh, on Friday. They're going to have an excerpt of that, Daryl Kyle. They found him uh, in his uh, hotel room. Remember that night they canceled the game? Uh, I believe I was doing Sports Center that night. Oh man, Mitch is good. <laughs>